So here's the headset, cool included. Let's see what we got here. We got one, two, we got three, four, five. We got five spacers. We got the lower bearing. Always nice to put your finger in there and give it a spin. Make sure everything feels nice and smooth. Here's your top one. Uh, should feel slightly um, resistance, have a lot of somewhat resistance. We got fresh grease. It's gonna feel like that until we break it in. This is our top, top cover once we go get installed on, on the top of the headset there. This is our crown race. This one has a split, so that'll slip on real easy. No two involved. Because of the split, it's gonna spread open. Um, and then this is gonna go on top, just on top. Once we get our steer tube in, again, this is a split. Kind of reduces the, the movement in here. It's gonna take up the play. That goes right on top there. And then this will sit here, in a very particular direction. And then we have this really thin piece of metal right there. This is most likely is going to sit quite possibly right on top of our top, top of our bearing as well as the top of our split. I'll call that just a split, some type of a spacer increases, reduces space. So this right here will ensure that uh, we're going to hit the bearing properly and it's going to have good movement. It's not going to lag down. So just like that. This is an integrated or below surface headset. So we're just doing a thin layer of grease. We don't have to be, you know, Picasso, but you know, we can do this with love and, uh, you know, not too messy. Just basically do a thin surface here. And this is to ensure that the bearing is not going to get jammed in there when it's ready to come out. We're doing the bottom as well. so. I like to use the finger. You can use a brush to each their own. The owner, Ryder, chose to go with the new 2021 Fox, I believe it's a 2021 Fox 3.6. Very sexy, glossy black paint, 15 millimeter through axle, nice bright orange, signature orange, glossy black paint, and with the Kashima finish on these bad boys. Nice glossy crown race. Steer tubes should come extra long. That way you can fit it to your bike and we'll be probably making a cut on this once we find our good measurement. Gonna be installing the crown race on this one. So going back to the bigger bearing, this guy right here, got a split right on the bottom. We want the angle part of the bearing to be facing up so the flat portion of the bearing is gonna sit flat. So there's a lip on this. We want this facing up. We're gonna slide this on, boom. And that's one I can just definitely push on. Okay, go ahead and slide it down. So this one you just you could push on. Uh, other styles, you do need a, uh, a special tool. There's a park tool, obviously, and you can pound this on. But this one will press on. The more you can press it once it's on the bike, it, it'll, it'll seat even better. But most of the time, your fingers can get this pretty good. So that split can be anywhere, just as long as it's nice and flush to the crown, we're all good to go. So now we're ready to install our fork. It's gonna be rigging it up here. We're working closer to the table, so you got all your bearings ready to go. Once you put it up, we're gonna to need to hold it in place. We're gonna be putting the rest of our headset parts on and then as well as our stem. So we're gonna to need to have our stem ready to go. So let's, let's get that. So we're gonna do a real thin coat of grease at the base right here, right there where your bearing's gonna go. Then we're gonna slip the lower bearing on. And we're gonna make sure that the rest of the steer tube doesn't have any grease. If we got some grease like right up on top, we'll just go ahead and give that a wipe with that rag that's behind you. Once we slide that on, we're good to go. Just gonna make contact, full nice and flush. Let's get all your pieces ready to go. So now we can go ahead and drop in our upper bearing. Again, that has a beveled edge. Beveled edge is gonna be sitting down, meeting the contour. Um, mating surfaces together inside the head tube and the bearing. Yeah, but so this, we got... Is it the orientation thing? Uh, the orientation is going to go this way. So the tapered end is going to go down and it's going to fill this gap right here, so that looseness. Mm -hmm. So we got bearing, steer tube, then we're going to go ahead and slide that on. It's going to take all that play out of the system. And it is split, so meaning that once you put more pressure on it, it's going to widen up, creating uh, some make it sure everything stays in place. Then we're gonna go ahead and throw that very thin washer on top. And that's gonna to help to make sure we get the pressure in the correct area of the bearing, still allowing the bearing to spin. Then we got this little cover, it says FSA on this guy. This may or may not have a rubber O-ring on the inside. Let me go ahead and pull that off. Light grease in there. If this one had a, a O-ring, we'd put a little light grease in there. 
And the O-ring is just to keep dust out from this area right here. So it actually sits pretty nice and flush. So at this point, we can go ahead and put your, your spacers. So depending on what you have, since this is being a trail bike, it's new, and this goes for any bike, maybe we wanna add uh, quite a bit of spacers and we could always play with the height. And then once you find your height, you can go back and cut your excess of your stereo tube off. So you can kind of guesstimate or you can measure off of other bikes as long as the head tube angle is remotely the same. Um, so depending on what you want to do, you want to throw all, all of them on there? Yeah, uh, you should be, what I saw was that um, lately that most of the new bikes, they have an excess over the, the stem. They have a lot? Yeah, it's probably, it's just, it's probably uh, what they, I mean, so that they won't be cutting a lot from the mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I wonder. You could, if you want to, you could put as many as possible, uh, what would be safe. Um, I would, this is about approximately an inch right there. So I probably wouldn't be going too much higher than that. Okay. But uh, say you wanted to sell this bike or sell the fork down the road, um, having the extra length here gives that next person a chance to maybe put this fork on uh, a bike that might be slightly smaller. You'll still have some steer length to play with rather than cutting it too short and it limits the options of what this fork uh, could fit on. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and throw on the stem. Pick your orientation, it's either slammed. In this case, this is a specialized, this looks like a, maybe a 50 mil or 40, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna be put in this orientation right there. And then what I like to do is just kinda push down on the stem, push up on the fork and just kind of squeeze as I'm twisting and turning, doing something like this, just to make sure everything's seated or bearing seated. Uh, barely have a, a crease here, very tight here. Everything looks pretty good. You could even give it a spin, make sure everything feels good. How's that feel to you? Mm -hmm. yep. And then we're gonna go ahead and lock that in place. So we're gonna tighten this guy up. And just one bolt, just to hold it in place, make sure everything's nice and firm. So now I know that I can, we can let go of the fork and it's being held by the stem. Then we're gonna go ahead and place a marking here. So if you want to, we could add maybe another spacer, maybe like a 10 mil spacer right on top. That might buy you a little more room if you do need to play around with it. So right now we're sitting high. Uh, we can always down the road, take uh, five, 10 mil out, pull the stem off, take the 10 mil out, put the stem back on, put the 10 mil back on top, and then we can Go ahead and play with that and see if that feels good. Yeah, we don't want to leave this too high, you know. Oh, if if yeah, you have yeah. a lot of excess, I mean, it, it's not that it's going to impale you if you go over the bars or something, but this might buy us a little more space if you're really unsure um, mm -hmm. about what size you need. So we're going to throw that on top of there. So now we're going to make a measurement on there on top of here. So usually we're going to get some type of scroll. Um, you can use a blade from um, the saw you're going to use, put a marking, then we're going to take this fork off. So once we're pretty sure everything's nice and tight here, we got your spacer stem, another spacer on top. Gonna go ahead and put a, basically just lightly scratching mm -hmm. the aluminum surface of the steer tube. And then we're gonna be able to use that mark to make our cut. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the fork and put this in the vise. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the fork. We'll take the fork out. Once the fork out, we're going to Use another, as a park tool, SG-6. This is an old one, so they might have renamed it, but we're basically putting it over into the vise. Oh, sorry. So basically, we're gonna use this cutting clamp here. It's gonna allow us to align, and we're gonna run the blade through. It's gonna make us cut a straight line once we find our mark. So once we find that marking, we're gonna measure at least three millimeters below because we don't want the top of the steer tube to be flush with our stem or our spacer. We need it to be just below about three mil. And remember the blade itself is probably gonna eat away one mil. So take that into account. And once you make your mark, you can go ahead and throw a, drop your blade in there and you can get a, a better idea where you're looking at. So remember that blade's gonna take up probably a mil. So let's get at least three mil below. And then remember with these hacksaws, it cuts one direction, it's cutting forward. So you can apply light pressure going forward. When you're dragging back, just let the weight of the saw come back towards you. That way you'll keep the blade from getting too worn out.
And once you make the cut, we're gonna go back and just file the edge, make sure it's nice and soft. So I'm gonna go one more step. This is going above and beyond, but we're going to basically go on the inside here. There's a sharp edge on the inside. Really don't need to, because we're not putting any tool here, unless we're, we're doing our, uh, our star nut. But um, it actually might help for installation, but I like to do this anyways, because it makes for a clean cut. In case this is rough, you rub your fingers here. And, and you gotta do this hard. And just do that like about two times, either direction. Okay, so now we can go ahead, uh, reverse order or continue forward. Make sure we have our crown race on there. Yeah. Got our bearing. If our bearing's not on the fork, it's probably still stuck in there. Yeah. Go ahead and up, got our bearing on top. Okay, so uh, this is the park tool. This is a little old school. This is a TNS-1. It'll do a one inch and an inch and an eighth um, steer tube. So this basically screws on, screw it onto the max, just finger tight. And then we're gonna line it up with the top. And this is what makes it harder about this one here is that we have to hold this straight and if you're doing this by yourself then I'm holding this in my hand um, you could probably set the fork down but make sure we're not hitting any knobs on the bottom we don't want to harm the dropout area but we're giving this a tap bink if you hit it hard enough it'll seat it and if it's a little crooked we could always straighten it and tap it and get it straight and just pound this all the way down so let's get a hammer from that drawer over there I got it oh, where's the red yeah so if, yeah, if you want to keep your hand right there, but you can do this by yourself. The newer, <laughs> the newer um, Starnet driver has a sleeve on it, so it actually slides over the steer tube, stabilizing everything for you. But careful not to pinch your fingers here. But I'm basically going to hold this tight and give it a smack. And it may not go, so we're going to do it again. Just need it to seat. Turn it to you, can flip it around and um, use your thumb to push to steer it. So right now we're not worried about uh, complete headset adjustment. We're just getting all the majority of the play out, bringing this up tight, smushing everything down, and then we can go ahead and put on our top cap and run our top cap bolt in there. And this, you're gonna tighten very gently. This top cap bolt is only meant for preloading the bearing. We're gonna do it very gentle. Um, we don't want to crush anything, so you can put a little pressure here, cinch it up with these two pinch bolts here. These are the two important ones. That's going to keep your handlebars in line with your fork here. So gentle pressure here, just uh, you can tighten one or both bolts here. We can always go back to this and do final adjustment when we get the wheel on. Bike's almost completely done. Get it down to the floor, use our front brake to help us get that full adjustment for that headset. <laughs> 